Today we're going to look at an interesting integer sequence known as Sylvester's sequence. And so Sylvester's sequence is recursively defined by taking the product of the previous terms and then adding one. So in symbols, it's like this. So S sub n is one plus the product S zero up to S n minus one. So that means S zero will be one plus the empty product because there's nothing below that. But the empty product is just standardly taken to be one. So that's one plus one, which is two. Then similarly, S sub one will be one plus two, which is three. S sub two will be one plus two times three, which is seven. S sub three will be 43 by a similar calculation and S sub four will be 1,807. And an interesting fact about uh, 1,807 is that's my birth year. Okay, so we're gonna prove two nice facts involving Sylvester's sequence. One is about the relative primeness of distinct terms from the sequence, and, other, and the other one will be finding a closed form for the sum of the reciprocals of this sequence. So let's look at the relative primeness result first. So I've written it as the following proposition. So if M is not equal to N, then the GCD of SM and SN is equal to one. So that's equivalent to what I just said in words. Okay, so if M and N are not the same, then that means that one has to be bigger. We might as well assume that N is bigger. So let's say that. So without loss of generality, let's suppose that n is bigger than m and let's also suppose we have a common divisor of s m and s n okay nice so a common divisor well that's something that will divide both of them we can use our kind of notation for divisibility um, in order to encode that over there okay so let's see, that means that SM is equal to D times A and SN is equal to D times B for some integers A and B. Great. Now from here, we'd like to use our recursion to write SN in terms of SM. So let's do that. So now let's take SN, we can write that as one plus S zero times S one, all the way up to SN minus one. But I left myself a little bit of a gap here. And that's because N is bigger than M, so that means somewhere along this product, we hit SM. So that's actually the key to this whole thing. Okay, so now let's maybe introduce a little bit more notation. This is going to be 1 plus x times sm, or sm times x, where x is just the product of the rest of these terms. So maybe we could write that as s0 up to sn, but not including sm. We can notate that by putting a hat over this. Okay. So from here, what we'll do is take this property that SM is a multiple of D to replace SM with this multiple of D, and then SN is also a multiple of D. So that gives us a new equation to work with. That's D times B is equal to one plus, let's see, it'll be D times AX when all is said and done. Now we can move some things around to see that one is now equal to D times B minus AX. So what have we done? Well, we've taken the number one and we've written it as a product of two integers. But the only way to write the number one as a product of two integers is either one times one or negative one times negative one. But since we're taking D to be a common divisor of those two, we might as well take it to be a co positive common divisor, which means we might as well take those to be natural numbers, which tells us that D is in fact equal to one. So let's see what we did. We took any common divisor of SM and SN and we showed that it had to be equal to one. But if any common divisor is equal to one, that means that in fact, the greatest common divisor is also equal to one. So we have the GCD of SM, SN is equal to one as needed. Okay, so now let's move on to our second result.
So our other big result will involve the sum of the reciprocals of the Sylvester sequences, but we need the following lemma. And so this lemma builds out this other one-step recursion definition. It's a nonlinear recursion for these numbers. So we would set the seed S0 to be equal to two. So that's based off of this kind of defining property up here. And then we have the nth term is equal to Sn minus one times the quantity Sn minus one minus one and then add one. Okay, so we wanna prove this kind of recursive property here. So I've uh, summarized that up here. Okay, so let's get to it. All that we'll do here is start with the right-hand side and work towards the left-hand side. Okay, so let's maybe take Sn minus one squared minus Sn minus one plus one. Then we can factor out an Sn minus one, leaving us, leaving us with Sn minus one minus one and then plus one. Now we can take this inner Sn minus one and rewrite it using our defining property up here. So let's do that. So that'll leave us with Sn minus one. And then we'll have S0, S1, all the way up to Sn minus two, plus one, minus one. So let's see. This Sn minus one turns into this thing that I'm underlining in purple by our definition. And then this minus one just comes down, you know, for free. And now we can cancel out this plus one and this minus one, and then don't forget to bring this plus one down. And that's going to leave us after commuting with one plus S zero S one all the way up to S n minus two times S n minus one, moving this S n minus one over, but that's exactly equal to S n as needed. Okay, so we've established this recursive rule and now we're ready to look at our sum. So like I said, our other big result will be to find the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over Sn. In other words, the sum of the reciprocals of all of these members of the Sylvester sequence. Okay, so we've got an infinite sum. In order to properly evaluate this, we'd probably like it to write it as the limit of the partial sums. So let's do that. So this is gonna be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum as little n goes from zero up to capital N of one over S sub little n. Then since I wanna apply a recursion, which doesn't quite work for the first term, I'm gonna take the first term out of this. So that's gonna give me one over two because that's one over S zero. And then I'm left with the limit as capital N goes to infinity. Now I have the sum as little n goes from one up to capital N. Because again, I've taken the zeroth term out of one over S N. But I'm actually gonna multiply by a version of one here to make this calculation work. And the version of one that I will multiply by is Sn minus one quantity squared. So I've got Sn minus one squared, and then I've got Sn over or times Sn minus one squared. So just to reiterate, I just multiplied by one there. Okay, so now let's maybe simplify this a little bit kind of towards using this recursion over here. So I've got a half and then plus the limit as capital N goes to infinity. And then I have my sum as little n goes from one to capital N. This is gonna be Sn squared minus Sn plus one minus another Sn. So I multiplied that out, but as while multiplying it out, I pulled it apart a little bit in order to use this recursion, which we just proved. And then I'll take the denominator and I'll rewrite that a little bit differently as well. So I'll write this as Sn squared minus Sn times Sn minus one. And that's clearly gotten from just taking one of these and multiplying the Sn through. And now we can apply our recursion in two places. So notice this guy right here is exactly Sn plus one. And then this guy right here is exactly Sn plus one minus one. Okay. But now looking at this carefully, 
That motivates us to subtract one from here and then also subtract one from here and include parentheses just so that this SN plus one minus one will cancel with this term and then this term will cancel with this term kind of one at a time, making our simplification occur. Okay, so let's see what we get after that step. So that'll give us a half, and then we have the limit as capital N goes to infinity, and then my sum as N goes from one to infinity of, okay, so first off, I'm gonna let this SN plus one minus one square in the numerator and the denominator, leaving me with one over SN minus one. Then, letting this SN minus one cancel in the numerator and the denominator, I'll be left with one over SN plus one minus one, but I'm gonna put that into another sum. So I've got the sum as N goes from one up to capital N, I should say, of one over SN plus one minus one. So just to reiterate, this first term came from this together with the denominator, canceling as necessary, whereas the second term came from this guy right here with the denominator canceling as necessary. Now what we'd like to do is pull out the first term from this first sum and then start to re-index. So notice taking the n equal one term out will make this start at n equals two. But then if we start this at n equals two, we need to add the n equals one term back on. That'll be plus one over s sub one minus one, which is one over three minus one. So we're left with something like that. So that's gonna give us one over three minus one plus half, which is one. And then we'll have plus the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum as N goes from two up to capital N of one over SN minus one. So that's this first one. Then let's see what we can do with this second one. Well, we can re-index this second one so it looks like the first one. So we can take N and replace with N minus one. That means that N plus one will be replaced with N that means n equals one will be replaced with n equals two and n equals capital N will be replaced with n equals capital N plus one. So again, like I said, we're just re-indexing here. So that means we're gonna end n plus one, we're gonna start at two and we're gonna run through like that. So again, I'll take off the top term and leave the bottom terms. So that'll give me minus the sum as n goes from two up to capital N of one over, let's see, Sn minus one. And then we've got to subtract off the n plus first term, which is one over Sn plus one minus one. So we're left with something like that. And then all of this is within the limit. But now we can see that this sum will cancel this sum because they're the same. And then as n goes to infinity, this guy right here most definitely goes to zero because these Sylvester numbers are becoming astronomically large. So I won't prove that carefully, but I think that's pretty clear. So all of that stuff goes to zero, leaving us with just the number one. So in other words, the sum of the reciprocal of these numbers is equal to one. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.